Hi everyone. Now, Powerhouse Indicator is a boutique Blu-ray label that's based in UK and they do a mixture of Region B titles and multi-region titles. They've just done their June 2024 announcement. I'll show it here of the four titles that they're going to be releasing. Uh, but there's one of those titles I just want to talk about now, and that is this one, The Whole Truth from 1958 and directed by John Gilliman. Now, Indicator have actually put out John Gilliman's previous film to this one, which was Town on Trial, made in 1957, a nice little British movie uh, that starred John Mills. And here you can just see from the booklet uh, a picture of director John Gilliman. And there was a scene uh, from the climax of the film that has John Mills climbing a church spire. Now, I have a particular interest in John Gilliman. Uh, I have got a pretty comprehensive collection of his films, and I have done a video before uh, to talk about those. I'll put a link uh, to that video in the description box below. But yeah, John Gilliman is an interesting director, I think. Uh, I mean, he started off in the British film industry and made a, a number of interesting films that are perhaps little known, really, uh, in the 50s, um, before then going on into the 60s to do uh, Tarzan movies, uh, movies with Peter Sellers, movies with George Peppard, uh, war movies such as Guns at Batazi, uh, and then into the 70s, some big blockbusters, which included King Kong and The Towering Inferno. Um, he unfortunately he had a bit of a decline in film quality, I suppose, and box office hits uh, in the 80s, as well as suffered the loss of his son. Uh, and so he retired from directing in the 80s, late 80s. Uh, he unfortunately passed away in 2015. His passing went fairly unnoticed, really. It didn't get any mention uh, at the Academy Awards when they do their In Memoriam. Um, a little bit like that situation we've had this year where there's no mention of Lance Reddick or Treat Williams. Um, and yeah, this was something that affected uh, John Gilliman's widow, Mary, and uh, she actually went about uh, publishing a book on the life of John Gilliman. Um, so yeah, recommend this if anybody wants to read up a little bit more about him. Um, but even this isn't fully comprehensive about his films. John Gilliman didn't really do any interviews as such, um, and a lot of his films just kind of have been um, disregarded, if you like. So uh, it's really good if we can actually generate more interest in more films from his career. So the whole truth, um, what it is, it's a murder mystery kind of story. I'm not going to give you any plot spoilers, don't worry. Uh, but yeah, basically we've got Stuart Granger in this movie playing a movie producer. Uh, he's out in the French Riviera making a film. He's having an affair with his leading lady. Um, a murder happens and it seems as though he's getting framed for that murder. So I won't say any more than that. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, just look at this film a little bit more in terms of who's in it and who was involved in it. Now, Stuart Granger, quite a suave and charismatic actor. Uh, in later career, he seemed to wear a lot of cravats. Um, but yeah, he was uh, definitely in the 50s, quite an exciting actor to watch, uh, particularly in swashbuckler type films, uh, which included Scaramouche, and the 1952 remake of The Prisoner of Zender. Really, really good movie. As well as being in the 1950 version of King Solomon's Mines. And his male co-star in this film is George Sanders, uh, who's perhaps most famous for being in All About Eve. But yeah, what a magnificent voice George Sanders have. And actually, Stuart Granger and George Sanders had worked together uh, before in 1955, um, in the buccaneer type drama that's called Moonfleet that was directed by Fritz Lang. Uh, definitely a film that I used to see on TV quite a lot when I was a kid, but uh, it doesn't seem to be around much nowadays. Now, George Sanders has quite an interesting role in this film. I won't say too much about it, uh, but yeah, he's uh, a good reason to watch this one. Um, obviously, any time George Sanders is on film, it's worth watching. Now, the female lead in this film playing uh, Granger's wife is Donna Reed, and uh, she's perhaps best known uh, for being in From Here to Eternity, and particularly as James Stewart's wife in It's a Wonderful Life. So when Donna Reed made this film, she was actually just about uh, to launch her own TV show, The Donna Reed Show, which ran from 1958 to 1966. 
Um, unfortunately, in this film, she doesn't really have a hell of a lot to do in it, which is a little bit unfortunate considering uh, she's really quite a lovely actress. But uh, yeah, that's a bit of a downside to the film. And the other main actress who's making her film debut in this one is Gianna Maria Canal. Um, and she also went on to star the same year, actually, uh, with Steve Reeves in the classic Hercules, um, as well as The Silent Enemy with Lawrence Harvey. Now, as I said, this film is set in the French Riviera, but uh, unfortunately don't expect to see any great location photography in this because um, this was quite a low-budget, studio-bound film. So most of the sets here are just uh, interior sets um, of houses and things of that nature, um, but there are some external scenes. It's filmed in black and white by the cinematographer Wilkie Cooper, uh, and he's certainly been involved in a lot of classic films, a lot of Ray Harryhausen films, actually, including um, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, Mysterious Island, The Magnificent One Million Years BC. But besides that, also uh, an absolutely fantastic film uh, from 1941, a classic by Cavalcanti, uh, which is Went the Day Well. Really superb uh, wartime film, this. There's quite a jazzy score to this film, and it's done by a composer called Misha Spoliansky. Now, this probably won't mean much to most of you, but for me, it's quite significant because Misha Spoliansky actually scored the very first film I saw at the cinema, uh, which was Northwest Frontier. This is a 1959 film with Kenneth Moore, and no, I'm not that old. Uh, this was actually shown as a double bill in 1974 with Digby, the biggest dog in the world. So that was my first time going to the cinema. Now, the script for this one is actually adapted by screenwriter Jonathan Latimer. Um, now, it was a TV show, actually, first of all, in the 1950s. Uh, I don't think you can see it anymore. Um, and it was also a stage play, um, so written by Philip Mackey. Uh, but yeah, Jonathan Latimer has certainly worked uh, in crime a lot in movies and TV, late career doing some Perry Mason and Columbo. Um, but yeah, earlier in his career, um, perhaps one of the most significant films that he worked on was The Big Clock with Ray Milland in 1948, um, and also adapting the Dashiell Hammett crime drama The Glass Key in 1942, uh, which starred Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake. Now, the editor on this film is a guy called Jerry Hambling, uh, and this was an early point in his career. Uh, he actually went on to uh, do quite a number of movies and became the go-to editor for director Alan Parker, um, including films such as Bugsy Malone, The Commitments, uh, and Mississippi Burning. Uh, he also edited films for Jim Sheridan, including um, In the Name of the Father. Now, the producer on this film, very influential guy, and it's Jack Clayton. Uh, and he went on to direct in 1959 a real classic of British cinema, and that is Room at the Top with Lawrence Harvey and Simone Signore. But he's also involved in another film in Indicator series, uh, which is The Pumpkin Eater. And many people will know him from directing uh, The Innocents, which is in the Criterion Collection. Brilliant movie. Now, I'll just put on the screen beside me um, all the extras that are going to be appearing on Indicator's Blu-ray release here. So this is a worldwide first on Blu-ray, um, and they've put in quite a few extras here. Now, I'd be quite interested to see what these extras are going to be like. I know when it comes to John Gilliman himself, there's actually not too much that's available about him. Um, very little that has been written about him um, or spoken. Now, as you can see there, there's an interview with Ronald Spencer, assistant director. Uh, and it looks as though that interview was recorded in 1991, um, at which time Ronald Spencer would have been 67. Now, if IMDb is anything to go by, uh, this gentleman actually turns 100 in July of this year. So a very early uh, happy birthday to Ronald Spencer. That's fantastic. Um, as an assistant director, his film career ended in around 1959, uh, with Danger Within being the last film that he worked on uh, so the whole truth would have been a very late part of his career um, but yeah he's certainly been involved in some films that are, are interesting the man between being one of them and a particular favorite of mine which is the long haul from 1957 um, this is a film which uh, if you've seen hell drivers then maybe you might like the long haul it's along similar lines stars victor mature and diana Dawes. but yeah he was also involved in another film that's uh, in indicators series which is Footsteps in the Fog, also starring Stuart Granger. Uh, and he also worked with Jack Clayton on Room at the Top. 
So as you can see, whilst this may be a fairly small film, uh, the people that are involved in its making, it makes it really quite fascinating. Um, so yeah, this is, I'm not going to say it's the greatest whodunit or murder mystery thriller that's out there. Uh, I do think there's some weaknesses in the script. It gets a little bit silly at times, perhaps. Um, but maybe, I mean, think about Town on Trial. I don't know how many of you may have seen Town on Trial already, uh, but if you enjoyed that, then I think chances are you will enjoy the whole truth uh, because I also think the town on trial suffers from some script weaknesses. I mean certainly John Gilliman's strength is that uh, he keeps the momentum of the movies going. Um, there's quite good pacing, uh, there's some good um, stylistic choices, good editing, it looks good, um, all of that kind of thing. But uh, yeah I think if John Gilliman had a weakness, uh, it was that he didn't always have the best ear for dialogue, I would say. Um, so, yeah, great in many other respects as a director and getting uh, things together. Um, but, yeah, scripts and particular lines of dialogue. Um, that's, I think, is where some of the weaknesses are. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, like I say, it's a small film. Um, it's not necessarily going to you know, be everyone's favourite at all, but it's an interesting one. I'm really pleased that Indicator have put it out on Blu-ray uh, so that more people will get the chance to see it. I know a lot of people do sort of blind buys on these. I mean, chances are uh, a lot of these titles that Indicator put out, for most people, they're going to be unfamiliar with them. Uh, they don't know the history of them. So uh, yeah, if you're going to take a chance on them, then great, do that. And I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments if you have seen uh, Town on Trial, perhaps, uh, and if you're familiar with other John Gilliman films. Like I say, I will put that link uh, below to my previous video. I went through um, John Gilman's filmography. Um, okay, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of that. Leave me any comments that you have. Please do join me again for some more videos. All the best to you. Bye-bye.